Hey, what's up YouTube, Ronix with Data Natural, and this is going to be a simple and easy to understand tutorial about how to use your mixer brush tool and the best way to use the mixer brush tool in order to get the best blending of the skin tones and as you're still retaining the skin textures in all your images. So stay tuned and if at all learn something from the, from the tutorial, rather, don't forget to subscribe this channel. And don't forget to hit the like button on this video. So let's kick in and start learning about how best to use the mixer brush tool in order to uh, do your skin retouching and even now the skin tones are the best way in Photoshop. So usually I prefer not to use any actions because someone out there may not be understanding uh, the process for uh, frequency separation and why we do apply those values so if i told you want to learn how to use a mixer brush tool where well, you are also using a photoshop action i'm going to put a link for you right above here so that you can understand how you can create your own actions for skin retouching in just photoshop in order to fasten or quicken your skin retouching processes so let's just kick in and restart so usually you have to always notice or note that you have at the right bit size for your images so usually we have 8 and 16 bit for images like i do have right now so usually for frequency passion we have two layers that is uh this we're just going to simply come hit ctrl j or command j to create these two layers so in our frequency passion we usually have low and we usually have the high frequency i know you all know these steps this is containing the colors and the skin tones and this is containing the texture so we turn this off usually and we come to the low frequency layer then we come to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur so under gaussian blur if at all you have created your action uh here, here is where you have to get uh, most of the textures in the images and having them look the best way possible so you have to zoom in and if at all you play the action, it is uh, going to stop right on this option. So you have to always zoom in like this until you are seeing the area that has more textures uh, or prominent textures in the image. So you have to move this radius until we are, we are starting to completely lose out on the textures in that very or particular image. So for this case, we are going to go with the radius of uh, 10. So I think at around 10 we have lost out on the textures if at all I'm to hover around this very image. You can see we can no longer see the textures and the image right here is uh, kind of looking blurry or out of focus. But we can still notice the facial structures. So we're going to simply come and hit OK. Then come and select the high frequency layer and activate it. So come to image and come to apply image so when you come to apply image if at all you're having an 8-bit image so you have to take close close attention if at all i just need your attention i know you are not paying attention so if at all you have an 8-bit image you can simply come and select the low frequency layer because we want to subtract the textures from the low frequency layer so for an 8-bit image, make sure you change the blending mode to subtract and opacity 100, uh, preserve transparency and your mask uh, are not checked or marked. The scale is 2 offset 128 and invert, make sure invert is not checked and always make sure the preview is on so that you can see the textures on this gray kind of layer. And if at all you have a 16-bit image like we do have, so we're just going to come to the low frequency layer and change the blending mode from uh, whichever it is to add uh, opacity 100 scale is 2 offset 0 and make sure these options are not checked so when you do this for a 16 bit image always make sure that you invert and you'll have your textures on this gray kind of layer so come and hit ok then come to the blending mode and change it to uh, linear light so for those that saw me when I, uh, when I was showing you a tutorial about how you can easily create your Photoshop actions for skin retouching, you'll notice that I had to create a black and white layer 
within my frequency separation group are in the action. So the reason for doing that is because the black and white layer is going to show us where we're going to be blending using the mixer brush tool for this very image. So let's let's just put these two in a group by selecting both and you can either drag them to this group or for the icon and you're going to name that uh, I'm going to name that group FS for frequency separation. So we're going to come the high frequency layer and this is where we are going to create a black and white layer inside. So come to adjustments and create a black and white adjustment layer. So right now you can no longer see the details. And uh, I forgot to tell you guys, if at all your tool is showing this cross like icon, always make sure that you turn off the caps lock key. So right now you can't see the uneven skin tones in the image, however much I try to zoom in. But when you come to the red channel and you darken it, you're going to start seeing those uneven skin tones or bumpiness within the skin tones. So just darken it like that. Only darken the red channel and just close it. So right now, come and select the low frequency layer. Remember, skin tones are on this uh, gray kind of layer. So remember, skin retouching is more about blending or evening out the skin tones of a particular image so you just want to even out or blend those skin tones so that you can have a perfect blending skin tones and a really nice and beautiful image so we're going to come under the brushes and for those people who have been asking what i press when i'm using a mixer brush tool here is why you have to pay close close attention so come under the brushes and you can simply uh, right click under the brushes and select your mixer brush tool and if at all you don't have it under the brushes it's usually right here so right click here and look for your mixer brush tool then come right down here and make sure it is a clean brush so we have two options so select the second one the reason for this is because the first option is going to load the brush after each and every stroke and the second one is going to do the opposite that is cleaning the brush after each and every stroke so we have to highlight or select the second option uh, for the settings usually so many people have different settings for the mixer brush tool but for my case i i have tried and tested and i found that the i found out that this work best for me so i use the wetness of nine percent because i want to retain the details in the image then i use a load of 75 percent I use a mix of 90% and a flow of 100%. Then I make sure sample all layers is not checked or selected. So these are the settings for my mixer brush tool. And for those who have been asking about uh, the hardness of my mixer brush tool, you can see it is uh, a soft brush. So if at all you are asking about my hardness for the mixer brush tool, it is a soft round mixer brush so when i'm on my low frequency layer i always when i'm retouching and if at all you don't have uh, a graphics tablet or retouching tablet you can increase on the size of your mixer brush tool by using the brackets right after the p button on the keyboard to increase or decrease on the size of your mixer brush tool so when you want to start evening out the skin tones, make sure you even the skin tones the way light is falling on a particular area or uh, the way our skin tones are looking somewhat alike. So you don't want to mix uh, from the highlights to the mid-tones because that is going to be distorting the original shape of the model's face. So for those who have been asking what I click when I am uh, basically using the Mr. Brush tool, I don't hold any button on the keyboard. I usually uh, click, yeah, if at all you're using a mouse and if at all you don't have a retouching tablet and maybe you have your laptop and maybe your computer and a mouse, make sure you left click, you hold down uh, the left click button on your touchpad or your mouse. So left click and hold down and while still holding down, start are evening out the skin tones like that and as you're evening out these skin tones make sure you're on your low frequency layer so 
come right down this side and just hold down and start a blending or even out the, the skin tone so make sure you hold down and blend and when you want to blend on a new area hold down release and now hold down on that area and just harmonize or blend that particular area so i'm mixing the mid-tones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone and the way i am doing this i always make sure i don't over zoom into the image because i want to see the way the image some the way someone is going to be looking at it i may be on their phone or computer screen so i don't want to uh, zoom all the way in like i know some people use the mixer brush tool to this point so when you do this you're not going to be seeing those uneven skin tones so always make sure you uh, blend like that I uh, at a reasonable zoom so make sure you always do that i think that is too much i think this is fine so come and just harmonize and take your brush strokes as uh, the way light is falling on a particular area like if at all it is a nose area and this shape is going downwards i'm going to hold down the left click or i'm going to left click and hold down that button and simply start blending so for those people who have always had issues about uh the brush bringing uh, a dark color it is because you're always on your uh you're on a wrong layer always make sure that you're on this low layer so you want to see the progress so turn off the black and white layer and when you turn this on and off you can see uh what we have just done uh, using the mixer brush tool uh, to blend or even out the skin tones in this particular image so this my friend has been a story about the best settings for the mixer brush tool and how to use it to effectively do the skin retouching on all your images and if at all you have learned something new from this from this tutorial rather don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have learned something new and you're watching from this channel for the very first time ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet another one and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating